um, uh, top 15 branch, top 15 new DM, a pace be top 15 rookie DM in the nation, just doing some great things. So get your pen and paper out, get ready. Blake, take it away on handling objections. All right. Uh, I want to start this off with a little bit of a story time. And uh, I, I just really can't express how important handling objections is for the rest of your life. You know, Cutco aside, you need to be able to handle objections. There's going to be a lot worse things that happen in your life than someone saying the homemaker is too much, right? So little story time. Yesterday, I was driving home, grabbed dinner with a friend. Um, I was downtown driving home. This van was following me and I didn't really know what was going on. And I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to take a little detour, um, off my, off my route. I pulled into a neighborhood and the van followed me and I'm like, um, okay. And, uh, so I'm like, I did what, you know, every smart person would do with a fast car. Uh, I just peeled off. I was like, just went through the neighborhood. So I was flying, flying through, peeled off. Don't, don't uh, repeat this to your parents or anything. Um, and uh, so then I, I get, I totally ditch it. Like there's, it was not even close to me. Um, and then I see some lights like 200 yards back, flip on, there's a cop. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> and uh, so I'm like, all right. So I, you know, I pull over and uh, the guy pulls up. He's like, hey, you know, um, what's the deal? Where are you headed? And I uh, told him the situation. And uh, here's, what, here's what I said. I said, hey, you know, before, you know, before we uh, – so basically he said, you know, the reason why we pulled you over is because we had an unmarked vehicle that was following you. And I was like, oh, that was a cop. Um, and I was like, hey, you know, before, you know, before we say anything here, um, I just want to let you know, I'm, I'm sorry I wasted your time. If I knew that that was a cop, I, I would not have peeled off like that. I thought it was just some random person following me. Um, and so then I was like, hey, you know, I, I, sorry I wasted your time here. Um, and, you know, regardless of what happens, you know, tonight, if you give me a ticket, whatever happens, uh, I want you to know that, you know, you're not in an, you know, this is not an easy time to be a cop. And I really appreciate everything that you do for, for the community. And, uh, so I said that and, uh, he walked, he walked away and he came back and he's like, Hey, you got two parking tickets. You got to take care of them. And, uh, basically he, he let me off. Right. So there's a lot more to unpack there, but long story short, I handled the objection and I didn't get a ticket for driving way too fast through a neighborhood. Okay. So, uh, you know, we're all human, right? I make mistakes, but uh, that, that was like a pretty big objection I handled there, right? So uh, that's what I wanted to start with. And uh, it's life skills. It's about being calm and collected. And uh, I saved myself a little bit of money. And I, so I, I talked to my couple buddies in, in my group chat and I was like, I told them the situation. They're like, how did you get away with that? And I was like, vector trained. And they're like, huh, huh, right? So uh, yeah, that's just a little bit of a story time for you. Uh, just to kind of get into handling objections, I'm going to use the uh, the example of when I hopped on Sammy's call and sold that cookware uh, with her. And I'm going to kind of walk through some things. So uh, the first thing that I want you to write down is you're a friend and a kitchen consultant. Many of you view handling objections as like this thing like that you're like, going to war and button heads with the customer. Handling objections is the complete opposite of that. It's like bringing down that wall, like take my hand, I'll take you to the Cutco promised land. Okay. So you're a friend and a kitchen consultant. And the, the first thing, and you, you'll see this in one of my slides here in a little bit, but information is key. So why do people typically have objections? There's a few things, right? Most of them are smoke screens. At this point, you understand that most objections are just smoke screens. They're not really real, right? They're just like, some people need to say no a couple times before they say yes, right? So uh, you wanna provide them all the information. So what that means is they know, like when you're closing, that they, are, they know every piece that they're getting, right? They know exactly 
you know, you want to go over color of the handles, you know, so they're getting, they're knowing every single piece and you need to go over it a few times them. So you're going to get this, 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 and this. So what does that do? It builds the value. So this isn't directly about handling objections, but this is how you get less objections. Okay. You want to have more information for the customer and you need to ask confirmation questions. This is going to change the game for you. Okay. Qualifying questions. So what does that mean? Um, so Sammy, what you noticed is I went through all the pieces of cookware and basically I said, which pieces do you think you'd get the most value from in your kitchen? She yada, yada. And we, she ended up picking out two pieces of cookware. And before I closed on it, I was like, okay, so you're sure that these two pieces, like you'd use them all the time, you'd love them. And then again, I gave her all the information on the cookware that she needed, built up the value. And then I she said yes before I closed, right? Like, so this is the perfect, these are the perfect two pieces of cookware for you in your kitchen, right? She's like, yes, okay? So a few things that I want you to, you want to be keep writing this down. Like these are things that you can implement right away. So these pieces are, you know, you think you'd get the most value from, from these pieces in your kitchen? Awesome. So it's always you, your other questions, black or white handles. So they're just like answering, right? But it's psychology. It's them saying yes, confirming what they want over and over. And what do you know, if they say it seven, eight times, what's the next, what's the next answer when you try to close? Right? It's yes. Because they said yes eight times already, right? So sales is just a transfer of energy. And um, so, and then uh, another qualifying question that I asked and Sammy, you remember this, like literally this presentation is exactly what I did in front of you, right? So I asked, would you do it on the five pay or would you do it in full? And if they're unsure, right? So in, in Sammy's case, she's like, so I, I was, I didn't know, I came in, I was blinded by like the situation. I didn't know what their situation was like. So I explained the five pay, which I'm going to show you how to explain the five pay in the best way possible. The five pay is a tool for you. Okay. And uh, so she's like, Oh, you know, I don't think I would you know, necessarily need to do. And I was like, okay, awesome. And then I just went for the close. Right. But if she, if it was like the five pay, like I already explained it. So I want to show you how to talk about the five pay. And then at the end, I'm going to show you how to close. So a lot of times, like with handling objections, it's about handling the objections. But does anyone ever feel, raise your hand, that you're like, I just don't know how to ask for the order. Like, you kind of handle the objection. You're like, you're kind of just like sitting there and you're like, how do I ask them to buy this? Okay. So I'm going to show you how to do that in a very chill, relaxed way. Um, before any of this happens, they need to respect you. How are you respected? The question is. Keep, keep writing down, keep taking notes, please. How do they respect you? You dress sharp, your confidence. They can feel the confidence. They can feel the conviction that you have about the product. It's not that Sammy is super suave, right? But she's intense and she's passionate about Cutco. That's why she's doing well, right? So you are a kitchen consultant. So what that means is like, do you know what every knife that we sell is used for? Anybody, anybody on this call besides a manager? Does anybody know what every knife that we have is used for? Of course you do, Vern. Yeah. Right? In the homemaker, sure. yeah, not in the ultimate. Um, okay, so the next thing that I want you to, so I'm, I'm gonna talk about the five pay and then I'm gonna talk about some verbiage in answering objections, okay? So when you talk about the five pay, this is our easy pay, okay? So Cutco literally, like this isn't, there's no layaway, there's no interest, credit checks, no BS. Cutco literally put this in place so that our customers can get everything that they want right away. So write that down. I'm gonna say that again. So Cutco put this in place so that our customers can get everything they want when they want. And what does that suggest? That suggests that if you're on the edge, Mrs. Jones, about the homemaker, you should just get it because the five pay the, the five pay is in place for you, right? 
I, I also say things like even my millionaire customers do it. Yeah. Like even my millionaire customers do it. Why not? Right. It'll just be this today. You do that four more times and you're done forever. You never buy knives ever again. Okay. So write that down when you're talking about the five pay. The five pay is a weapon of mass destruction. Okay. So you need to get really good at explaining what the five pay is. Because a lot of times people's perception of it is like, oh, they're going to check my credit. There's probably a lot of interest on it. Right? Layaway, all the other BS payment plans that they've been a part of in their life, right? That, like, this is what Cutco does for the customer so that they can get it and they do it for you. Cutco has the five pay in place for the representatives to help you. Okay? So, really get good at explaining that. Use those tools. Um, the next thing that I want to talk about is the verbiage that you're using. Um, so the first thing that you do right away, say somebody gives you an objection, whatever it is. Okay. And I hope what you're getting from this, this message is it's not specifically about what the objections are. It's about your verbiage afterwards, right? I don't care if you have no idea how to handle the objection. If you use these tools, you're still going to be able to navigate it. Okay. So it needs first things first. I totally get that. You need to agree with them. Okay, write this down. So someone gives you an objection, you need to agree with them. So what does that do? That brings that wall down. Does anyone feel like the reason why they don't know how to ask for the order is because like there's like a little bit of a wall of resistance and you don't know how to break that, right? You're like, you just want to be on their side. It's like, hey, come over on my side. Cutco's awesome. Like, you're going to love this stuff, right? So a few things that you can say um, is first, you need to agree. And uh, if, it, if it's like something, if, they're, if, they, if they don't think they're getting the most value, right? Immediately write this down. This is what you're going to say. This is money. This is why my closing ratio and average order is where it's at is because I break down the wall. I kick through the door and I like bring them to the promise land. I'm like, come with me. Okay. So this, this right here is something that you should be saying every single demo. Okay. Hey, I totally get that. If it's, it has anything to do with, you know, the cuck, like the homemaker is not the best set for us. It's too many pieces, right? It, or it's too much money, whatever the objection is, hey, I totally get that. I'm not some salesperson that's gonna try to sell you something that you don't need. So I totally get that. I'm not some salesperson that's gonna try and sell you something that you don't need. So if you don't mind, I'll drop down, show you some of our smaller sets. And if none of those appeal to you, we can take a look at whatever pieces you'd like. Okay. So that last portion is kind of optional, but really important to understand that, you know, when you, when you break down that wall and you're like, Hey, let's figure out what's best for you. All right, Sammy, when I hopped on that call with you, how many times did I say the word value? I probably said it 15 times in like the four minutes that I was on the call. It's like, Hey, again, so, which pieces, you know, do you think you get the most value from, you know, before I close, you think you'd get the most value from, from these two in your kitchen. Okay. Awesome. Right. And I just kept saying value talked about the forever guarantee it's value, right? She had three pans that she loved that she replaces every year. Cause they get scratched up. I'm like, Hey, guess what? You'll never have to do that. That's crazy value. You're never going to replace it ever again. Right? So it's all about value, value, value. Um, the, the next thing is listening. Please listen to your customers. It's so awkward if you're not like actually listening and understanding their needs. Again, you're a kitchen consultant. So when you get down to the five piece, it's like, hey, you know, like, do you guys do, you know, raw meats in your kitchen? And this is where being a consultant, actually knowing what all the pieces are used for really helps because if your customer feels like, you're battling to get them the best deal and the best value possible. They're going to get it every single time. Okay. 
So listening to what they're saying. So again, you know, when that lady said she replaces her pans all the time, I use that in the clothes. Okay. And then using, you know, when you are giving stuff away for free, I want you to understand that Cutco is great value. Okay. If we like, if we stopped today giving anything away for free, we'd all be fine. Okay. In fact, you'd be selling a lot more CPO. <laughs> okay. So when you give something for free or you're in the negotiation process, I want you to be able to honestly say like, Hey, you know, I'm cover I'll, I'll cover this for you because I know you guys really want Cutco. So before you're offering deals, it's like, Hey, how about, you know, I'll cover this. I know you guys really want Cutco. I want to earn your business. And then you close. Okay. So real quick, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Let me take a look at this. So this is my close and what I say every single time. Okay. So first thing, phrases and verbiage to implement. Take a picture of this, please, real quick. Right here, so you'll see this answer. I'm not some salesperson. If you don't mind me asking listen to what they're saying, wish list. I use this one, Sammy. This isn't necessarily everything you're gonna get today, just something that you get in the future. Your, again. And then this is the close, take a picture of this. This is how I want you to close every single time. It's bulletproof. So everyone take a picture of this, please. Post it in chat when you got a picture of it. So if you're not sure, how to ask for the order, this is how you're gonna do it, okay? If you're not sure how to ask for the order, all you gotta do is read this. Okay, so you handle the objection, you drop down, you figure out what it is that's the best value for them in the kitchen, and then you close with that, okay? Hopefully y'all got that picture there. The last thing that I wanted to, Jason, how am I doing on time? Great. You had a couple minutes. Okay. Awesome. I want to handle some objections for you. So who's got, who's got some objections that they want to handle? This is what we did on Friday champs club. Then Katie sold a homemaker right after. So uh, what are some objections? Not something like obscene and like random that you're never going to get, but like, you know, some objections that you, that you come across every once in a while, like they just, uh, they just made a big investment in something else. Here, let me, let me take a look at. Okay, bad time right now to buy it, okay? Have no money to spend right now. Need to think about it. Can't fit it into my budget. Okay, awesome. Hey, first thing to understand is, uh, I guess my question for you is, do you guys have 289 a month that you could spend on a homemaker? The answer is no, that's okay. But most of you on this call, definitely, right? Right? Anybody agree? Like I could afford 289 this month. And if not, that's a different story. Just do more demos, right? But I mean, let's break this down, right? What does 289 look like? And this is, this is about perspective here. So it's about understanding that that's really just a smokescreen objection. 289 divided by four, that's 72 bucks, 72 bucks a week. So now that I break that down, who thinks that they could do 72 bucks a week? Some of you that might've said no are probably now thinking yes. Okay. What is 72 bucks a week? That is $10 a day. You've probably all went out and got some coffee or I got Culver's today. I swung through Culver's, that was 10 bucks, right? Like, what do you spend on miscellaneous crap all the time, right? So I want you to understand that that answer is like, they have no money to spend right now. Can they put a trimmer on a toupee? 72 bucks on the toupee, split it up. It's gonna be 34 bucks today, you're gonna love your cutco, okay? So maybe they don't have any, enough money to spend, you know, things are tight for them on the homemaker, but you drop down, 
the five their five favorite pieces you give them one for free in the tray and that five pay it's 80 bucks today 80 bucks today okay so you're showing to homeowners right important to understand that and then handling that objection it's like hey i totally understand you didn't wake up this morning thinking you're going to spend 1300 bucks on knives right uh so you know we'll drop down to some of our smaller sets and if none of those appeal to you we can uh, pick out whatever pieces you want. Okay. Right. So it's confidence. It's like, Hey, it's not, you know, if you say, you know, we don't have any money to spend right now. My answer is like, okay, that's fine. Uh, right. Like, Hey, no biggie. Right. And then you just drop down and you're, you're confident that they're still going to get Cutco, right? Because they're not saying no to the homemaker, but yet they are saying no to the homemaker. They're not saying no to you or Cutco. They're just saying no to that set because they don't see the value in it. Okay. So you just got to figure out what's the best value for them, be a kitchen consultant, and then close on it. And you'll close it every time. So it's not about them having enough money. It's about, is this enough value for us right now? Okay. So again, just agree. agree. It's like, hey, I'm not going to try and sell you something that you guys don't need or can't afford right now. I'll drop down to some of our smaller sets. We'll figure out what's the best value for you. Okay. They're like, okay, cool. All right. Anything else? No, Jason said we had a few minutes. Breaking down. Brilliant. Nice. I don't cook a lot. The big one is just later. I got to talk to my spouse later. I got to wait till, can we get back to you? Can we think about it? Uh, it looks like that's yeah. happening a lot. Yeah. So uh, here's, I love this one. Okay. This is the one where I like, call them out on their BS a little bit. I'm like, hey, you can totally do that, right? So j let me just ask you a few questions first. Like we can totally do that. Um, so is this like, would this be the set that you guys think you'd get the most value from over the next 20, 30, 40 years? Totally, yeah. Okay, sweet. So like, you're sure like this is perfect for you? I mean, yeah, we, I mean, we use all the pieces, just kind of bad timing right now. Okay, for sure. Um, and then, so, you, you guys would do it on the five pay. I'm assuming like if you were to go ahead and do it, you know, if those things are tight. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Mm -hmm. um, so let's say, let's say we're closing on a five piece, Jason. Sure. Like, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so again, the five pay, there's no interest. There's no layaway or credit checks or anything. So it would just be 80 bucks today. So you're going to get the trimmer, the paring knife, the spatula spreader, the chef knife and the petite carver. And then again, I'm going to throw in the, the paring knife for free for you and the tray. Um, so it would just be 80 bucks today. And then you guys would just do that four more times. So like, do you think that 80 bucks would, would fit in your budget? Yeah. I mean, we could do 80 bucks today. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cause that's all it is. It's just 80 bucks today. You get all your cut in the next week and a half. And again, you're never going to spend, spend money on knives ever again. Right. Cause so it's more of an investment than, you know, something that you're like just dishing out money for. And that automatically comes out that 80 bucks, four more times. You're done forever. You guys just want to go ahead and do it today. Yeah. I can just like try it out for a bit. Yeah. If you guys, if there's some pieces that you don't think you get the most value from, you can just send back and get a, send them back and get a full refund for them. I mean, can I, <sighs> sounds really great. Like you're doing a great job. I just, is there a way, can I talk to my, can I talk to my spouse about it and get back to you? I just, want to, yeah. I just want to clear. I just want to clear with them first. Yeah, you totally can. Uh, so that's why we have the the fifteen day guarantee. Again, guys, notice how I'm like, yeah, you can do that, right? Like I agree with them first. Like, hey, you totally can do that. That's why we have the fifteen day money back guarantee, and that's fifteen business days. So it's actually three weeks. So you know, if it's eighty bucks today, like you guys probably spend money like that, you know, all the time, like quick runs to the grocery store. You guys are going to get it in a week. And then how about you guys just use it? And then if there's some pieces that you don't like, or, you know, you don't think they're great, which I've had nobody do, uh, you guys can just send them back if he doesn't love it. Hmm. I mean, I guess he did just buy a set of golf clubs last month to get outside because we can go and stir crazy here inside. So Susie, I could get some knives, right? Yeah. Just treat yourself. Okay. Sound good? All right. All right. All right. Let's do it. High five. Welcome to the Cutco family. You're going to love it. Okay. So it's, it's playful. It's not pushy. It's getting, you know, getting some understanding of what their situation is like. 
and then you know they're they're just gonna get it. They always get it, and that starts with your mentality and your expectancy. Boom, boom. All right, thank you, Lake. Give it up for Lake. If you want more of that, uh, show up on Friday for uh, Growth Alliance Champs Club. All right.